Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are going to be replacing the differential fluid uh, oil in my Pathfinder. This is a 2008 Pathfinder. And we will be doing the front and rear differential fluids. So um, let's look at the book here like we usually do with the, with the uh, maintenance item like this. So in the book, it talks, it talks about uh, the front, let's see, the front final drive and the rear final drive. So it doesn't tell you capacities as you can see there. This is uh, capacities and recommended fuel and lubricants page in the user's owner's manual. Um, but if you come here, it does tell you the rear will use genuine Nissan differential oil hypoid super GL5 ATW90 or API GL5 viscosity SAE ATW90 gear oil. Um, and the rear one will be API GL5 synthetic 75W90 gear oil or equivalent. So the number nine for the front one and number 10 for the rear one here, let's go look. So number nine says, for hot climates, viscosity SAE 90 is suitable for ambient temperatures above zero Celsius 32 Fahrenheit. And number 10 says, see your Nissan dealer for service. That's for the rear. Now I went to Nissan as usual to buy the uh, recommended uh, oil and the lady there told me they don't sell the Nissan branded one, they do sell Benz oil one, but she didn't have, yeah she had this but she didn't have these uh, in the store so she told me I could use these instead of the front ones being the 75W. 90. So I decided not to do that and I went and purchased the Valvoline ones. These are the flex bags as they call them. So this is uh, SAE 75W90 for gear oil and uh, this was purchased from Advanced Auto Parts. I did a price match in the store for these. Um, they were 1250 at uh, Zorro.com and the store uh, Advanced Auto Parts did a price match. They couldn't do 1250, but they did 14. So I paid 14 each. I got two of these. So the rear takes two, rear differential. And this is based on some information I looked up. It's not official from uh, Nissan. Just looked it up on Google. Um, the front one uses ATW90 and I got this for nine dollars from Ace Hardware. Um, th these are supposed to be squeeze bottles so you may need the pump you don't need a pump but if I do if it's too messy I have my pump here from last time I did the transfer case I just washed it cleaned it and it should be dry by now so I could use it if I need to. Um, other things you will need uh, you will need a 10 millimeter hex bit, like this one here. This is 10 millimeter. And you will need a 3 8 drive for it. This is 3 8 bit. You will need a 3 8 drive. So I, last time I did the transfer case, it was very tight, but with a little bit of elbow grease, um, I was able to use this and break it free. This may be, it's a breaker bar, but it's unfortunately short, so it may not be a good option. If you, I have that long one, I could use an adapter, but I didn't. I just used this one and it was fine. Um, washers, you will need washers for these. Every time you change the plug, I mean change the oil, you need a new washer for the drain and fill plug in this case. So washers were $8 each uh, at uh, Nissan. But I bought these from Amazon, and this is a brand called RKX, and it's a made in the USA product. So four of these 
were $12. So this is a bag of four. So I get two bags because I need six total for transfer case and two differentials. So I already used two of this for the transfer case. So I needed six. So I got two bags, two bags for $25, good price. Um, it's good to buy a good quality one because it's not something you change every few months. It's supposed to be for a long time. So anyhow, I also have this 10 millimeter Allen wrench, but you must have really strong hand to use this thing to break it loose. And that's not me, but I have it here for maybe tightening easily. And it's getting dark today and it's evening. It's over six o'clock and it's rainy day, so it's dark. So I'm gonna use this light today to see my thing. Um, of course, some paper towels and I didn't bring uh, gloves, but gloves, you would need to use gloves to protect your hands. So that's what we're gonna do. I've got the thing here ready. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and go, get underneath. One thing I forgot to mention, you need to make sure your vehicle is level so you can get the draining done properly, but more importantly, the filling, you wanna fill it up in a proper way and it, the best, best proper way would be when the engine or the car is uh, level. So I did my best to level it and I even used the level here. You can see the bubble is in the middle. Maybe you don't see it, there you go. There is the bubble in the middle and uh, my drive my side uh, driveway is sloped but i did my best to get it level so i think i'm good okay i'm gonna go underneath now all right guys i'm under the vehicle now and this is the fill plug and the drain plug is right in the bottom of this on the other side and this is the front differential and you can tell because it's in exactly in between the two wheels the front wheels um, so that's how you can tell all right so the fill plug is usually right slightly below the axle and the drain plug will be in the bottom there so you always make sure you remove the fill plug first because if you can't remove this but you drain it then you're stuck so I'm gonna remove this first and then we'll go from there All right, so I got this loosened. It was really easy to do. It wasn't like the transfer case uh, tight. So I'm gonna just remove this. I'm expecting some oil to come out. Oh, nothing came out. So that may be a, a sign that it needed to be filled. So let's see, I'm gonna put my finger. Yeah, so the oil is at the level, so maybe not. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the drain plug now. Uh, guys, this is the drain plug. And it was also tightened, but not very hard like the transfer case was. So I'm going to remove it now by hand. I already loosened it. Being the drain plug, I'm expecting some oil to come out. Otherwise, this would have been seized by now. It's like a counter sunk in there. So this oil is like gold color, kind of. And you can see this plug is bigger because this big piece is a magnet. So let's go ahead and examine this magnet outside here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this magnet. I'm taking, uh, putting it on the side. So uh, this looks like oil, not uh, really like metal shavings or anything. Uh, if it was metal shavings, then you might have a problem. But I'm afraid this has not been changed before. I don't know. Don't remember. The vehicle has 125,000 miles on it. So it is good I'm replacing this. 
and I'll keep in mind to do this often especially now I know how to do it by myself okay so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this very well and we will put uh, a couple uh, new washers on there and we should be good uh, to start filling all right so draining completed guys and it didn't come out too much you can see there just a little bit not much so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this I already set the torque wrench to 28 foot pound of torque so I'm gonna okay it's already at that level okay so we'll leave it at that it's look clicking at 28 and I pushed it a little further so it should be tight enough all right so we'll move on to filling now all right guys so the drain plug is uh, in place and tightened now I cut the top of this bottle this is one of these squeeze bottles so I'm not sure if it's gonna work right or not I was reading about it being messy so I think I'm gonna try to use two hands to do this and if I can do it with one hand and I'll show you in the video if not I'm sorry I have to use two hands but I'm gonna try all right guys so I managed to squeeze like 400 milliliter in there so I'm gonna try to squeeze some more so it didn't drip much just just that amount there a few drips so hopefully things go well so it's uh don't know how much it takes but I was reading about it it's being just below a quart so I don't know how to squeeze the rest of this thing in there um, so I'm gonna try with two hands again all right all right guys so I apologize for not being able to tape the part last part of this front differential because it started raining hard and I was getting wet and my stuff got wet so I kind of just uh, finished it quickly and my LED light died too all at the same time got dark so I just finished it off camera but um, I filled it up all the way until it started dripping a little bit and then I put the thing on and tighten it to the uh, torque specs required and now I'm gonna go do the uh, rear differential uh, but before I uh, do that let me show you the amount of oil that came out <coughs> even my mat is uh, wet <laughs> um, so I ended up I couldn't squeeze everything out of that into the hole without using the uh, uh, pump that I have a lubricant pump so that lubricant pump I told you I washed it so I was afraid there may be some still water in it so to make sure that was not the case I brought it into this old oil that I took out from the differential and I just cycled through this oil through the pump several times maybe like for a minute just cycled it through and that pushed all whatever water there was in there must have gotten out I didn't see it but that would have been the case because this is a uh, you know oil is gonna push it out they don't mix um, and once I did that then I tried to empty the pump and then I came back to the bottle there and used it in that bottle now it, it, the top didn't tighten but it still can pump so I had to hold the bottle flat <clears throat> so I had to hold the bottle flat like this and while the pump is in it and pump it while holding it one hand for the pump and one hand for this to pump it into the hole um, but I got it all done as you can see this is empty so I put it all in there except maybe an ounce or two that wasted on the floor but that is it so I'll be putting this back in there just to make sure the measurements is correct and I'm gonna go do the rear differential now all right guys so now it's several days later and it's still cloudy you can see it's like about to rain but hopefully it doesn't um, I had to turn the vehicle around and back it up onto the ramps because 
otherwise it was just too low on the when the back was there so this way look how I have so much space I even removed the spare tire because I wanted to do a replacement for the spare tire anyway the one on it was from manufacturing date of 2007 so I removed the spare tire yeah and I removed it and now there is so much space so I can go in there no problem even if the spare tire was here it's not obstructing my work so but I'm gonna go that's the real differential right there so let's go take a look let me turn the lights on first all right guys so here we are under the vehicle and this is the rear differential that is the fill plug there and this is the drain plug now you can see this is so much more rusted than the front differential so what I'm gonna do here I'm going to spray some of this lubricant silicone lubricant I'm gonna spray some there and here and just let it sit for a few minutes so that way it will help it loosen easily so I will do that here um. So we just let it soak. And uh, we'll come back in a few minutes. So guys, this is a uh, proven stubborn. Um, I sprayed it three times and this is my third time and I gave it maybe 10 minutes in total and I had to use a hammer to hammer this uh, bit in because it wasn't going more than like two millimeters in so I hammered it a little bit that helps move the plug a little bit shake it in spot and place so it make it uh, easier to get out and uh, same thing with the drain one now this one is rustier so I suspect this is harder to remove um, so at this point I'm trying to use my hand with this extended reach uh, wrench if it didn't work I mean uh, yeah uh, ratchet wrench if it didn't work I'm gonna have to get me a longer one and try again if not I don't want to use my impact wrench but I might have to um, so I'll try with manual force first all right guys so I got it loosened um, once it was loose, I used my slip joint pliers to remove the bit from there, otherwise it would have been stuck. And I'm gonna remove the fill plug now. And I already loosened this, the drain plug. It was very, very easy to loosen. I don't know how, it wasn't even tight. <laughs> so I'm gonna remove the fill plug here. <clears throat> See if any oil comes out. Nope, oh, nothing came out. And that's fine, that's normal. Sometimes it does. Okay, I'm gonna remove this here now. This spare tire chain keeps hitting my neck, all that rust. Right. So you can see it's brown color or gold color. I don't know how what color the new one is, but that's the old one. And here is the magnet on the drain plug. Let me focus it here. Okay, so we'll try to clean this on video. Okay, so here is <clears throat> the drain plug that has the magnet and you can see the magnet is full of stuff but I don't know if it's metal shavings or just uh, 
you know dirty oil it's like dirty oil all dirty oil I see some metal shavings looks like I don't know that's normal stuff um, I don't see any metal metal uh, chunks or anything like that so just the normal wear and tear okay so I'm gonna clean it and put it back in of course replace the washers got the washers here all right so the draining completed and this is back in spot the torque wrench is set to 20 foot eight, uh, 28 foot pound of torque Looks like it clicked. Okay, that's it. So we will leave it done. So now we need to fill. So this squeeze bottle or flex, flex fill bottle was a little bit easier to handle from comparing to the Pennzoil uh, yellow bottle. Uh, that also maybe because there is so much space here that I was able to squeeze it in there and hold it from this side So I got it almost 95% of it into there and Still didn't drip this dripping is from the bottle. So only a little bit dripped just this much So I'm gonna use the second one now So guys, I think I overfilled it. I'm gonna show you once you remove this it's gonna flow out so you want it to flow a little bit slower and then plug it. So in my case, I think I put too much in it. I'm gonna let it flow a little bit out. I think that's good right there. And that's it. Yeah, the squeeze bottle worked a little better than the yellow one did. So I'm happy about that. So now I'm going to tighten it to the torque spec and I think that would be it. Hello everyone. Uh, so I drove the car for a while now, many, many miles. I checked it from the front and back differential to make sure there is no leaks and there is no leaks. Everything is uh, fine. Um, I noticed the car is driving very well now with the uh, I mean, it didn't have a problem before, but I can definitely say it is a smoother with the engine changing gear and stuff. Changing gears very smoothly after I changed the differential fluids, front and back transfer case and transmission. So when I'm, you know, accelerating, the uh, engine is changing gears really smoothly compared to before really good so I love it I'm glad I did it I should have done that a long time ago so I'll keep doing that uh, you know with the proper intervals all right thank you so much for watching this video with me I know it's been a long one but it is detailed and I wanted to include these details in there it may be helpful to someone if you have questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below and if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And I will see you all in the next one. All right, cheers.